My thoughts and prayers go out to the victims of Sandy Hook and their families. And maybe I was naive to think that after they killed children, something would change. My thoughts and prayers are with those in Orlando as they grieve after Pulse. And then they came for my community and I was stunned into silence. My thoughts and prayers are with Las Vegas and all of those killed at the Harvest Music Festival. And I selfishly wondered how the pro-gun lawmakers were helping their people in a city where you can get a gun and a marriage license in five minutes or less. My thoughts and prayers are with the Sutherland Springs community and those in Texas after another horrific church shooting. And then it happened again. They were lifting up prayers and they were praising the same God that I bend my knees and pray to and their lives were cut down in the process. So if I'm going to be honest, I'm getting a little tired of thoughts and prayers. As a seminarian and now as a vicar, I never thought I would say those words. Personally, I've always felt comfort and a lot closer to God through prayer, but we've been lifting up the action of prayer as an idol and feeding it to the bloodthirsty monster that is gun violence for a long time now, and it hasn't done anything to change the situation. Now, I'm not sitting here piously over anyone or looking down on those who cannot see the errors of this judgment, but I can say as someone whose family has been personally ravaged by the shock and finality of gun violence, that the thoughts and prayers are simply turning from a lion to be met by a bear. It has become a way to absolve ourselves from looking at the deeper issues, issues of domestic violence, of lone wolves, of people that sit in our own ELCA churches and then walk into others to murder people in cold blood. It's been calling for mental health care assessment while our government tries again and again to take those assessments away. So I can't help but wonder how we turn away from this darkness, how we turn and face our face to God at the ballot box or at the protest with thoughts and prayers, but even more so with action. After all, we are reminded today in the reading from Amos that God has no time for our songs or our harps. God doesn't delight in burnt offerings or empty promises not in our festivals or our assemblies, but God delights in justice and pours out righteousness like an ever flowing stream. So I wonder what does justice look like in a world where in a single year there have been 13,223 gun related deaths with no inclination of stopping? What does justice look like in a world where millions will lose health care and their chance at a better life? What does justice look like in a world where a Facebook campaign looking at the widespread familiarity of sexual assault and sexual violence does more than people set apart to govern? What does church look like or safe space look like when they find us there too? To be a modern day follower of Christ means many things and still to each they may vary. I look at my call to Christian discipleship as one who leads with an open heart while keeping an eye upward to the ancestors. A flawed human with a reliance on grace and a propensity to sin. We look at a God that loved us so much that they gave their only son to be a living sacrifice, to not die by a gun, but rather in the most gruesome way possible, hanging from a tree in front of those he loved. A God that knew that pain, but offered up much more than thoughts and prayers. A God that calls us still into a life of forgiveness, not because it's easy, but because it's especially hard to do so. We are called into a life in Christ, which places no life above any other. We meet broken and bent at the table and we offer up th thoughts and prayers but instead are greeted with bread and wine, reminders of the foretaste of the feast to come. We are washed with the waters of justice in baptism and are reminded to share those waters with those who thirst. May we do more for those who thirst than empty words and false promises. May we do more for those who grieve than Facebook shares and candlelight vigils. May we turn from the lion and from the bear and rest only in Christ who provides much more. May those who have died and those who will meet them at the banquet 
have more than thoughts and prayers, but rather life everlasting in the one that died for us. Amen.